All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome at a new episode of uh, Web's Webinar Wednesday. Um, today we have Matthijs uh, Ruikrok as our guest. Um, we're going to discover some best practices on uh, working on remote. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, I am Thijs van Rosmalen, sales representative at WEBS, and I host the uh, WEBS Webinar Wednesday episodes. Um, I'm curious about who is joining today, so uh, please say hi in the chat pane and let me know where are you located. So I say hi to everybody from Schertogenbos all the way in the south of the Netherlands. Um, we have Dubai, I see Amsterdam, uh, Bordeaux, Tilburg, Poland, Leerdam. Okay, Matthijs, so we have a lot of uh, locations uh, involved here. That's great. Um, let me explain some rules for today. It's the same as in every episode. You are all muted, so you can't uh, make yourself known via your microphone, but your Chat pane is your biggest friend for today. So please, if you have any questions or you want to clarify something, please use the chat pane. I will monitor that and I have the uh, permission to interrupt um, uh, Matthijs and ask the questions directly uh, to Matthijs. Okay, um, as I said, Matthijs is our guest for today. Uh, I'm very happy that he is joining. Matthijs is working at Vainu. It's originally a SaaS company from Finland with over 200 colleagues. They are working from six different countries. They have no external uh, funding so far. And Matthijs is responsible for the whole commercial team in the Netherlands based in two different offices. Um, you might know Vainu from clients as uh, in the Netherlands, uh, CSU, uh, but also TomTom and even PSV uh, in the South. Um, I would like to prefer that as another, comp another uh, soccer team, but uh, Matthijs is from Amsterdam as well. Um, what we're talking about is we're going to um, uh, build your pipeline on remote and Matthijs has some great perspectives for that. How to use inbound versus outbound and working on remote while <coughs> uh, we have that challenge. So Matthijs, for those who don't know Vainu, I will head over to you right now, give you the full access on this presentation, and please tell me a little bit what's Vainu. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, perfect. Well, first of all, thanks, uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, Thijs and myself has shared the uh, We've, we've done events together more often. This is the first time we're doing a webinar together, but I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make that work as well. Of course, um, I got you back. <laughs> uh, well, for me, for me, the goal is just if, if there's three things uh, you can implement this afternoon or this week before Easter, then for me, at least it's a success. Um, like like Ty said, I'm, I'm uh, Matthijs. I'm, I'm the head of uh, sales at, at Vinu Netherlands. Uh, we have a company data platform that basically helps you identify which accounts need your product or service right now. So helping sales reps find the best leads uh, to reach out today. Um, so let, let's jump a little bit back. I think no one has this written down or had this written down in, in their SWOT analysis. Um, but then again, um, it did happen, right? We're all working remote. Um, this whole situation is definitely not in our control, but the way we react is. Uh, and that's how I wanna, where we want to discuss uh, today. So let's, let's jump back uh, to the 12th of uh, March. Uh, it was a Thursday. And basically, I want to explain to you what we did on that first day. Uh, after that, I want to help you. Um, uh, after going through that, let's discuss, okay, how am I actually going to book meetings? Uh, how am I going to conduct those meetings to actually get new business in? Uh, and last but not least, how am I going to stay engaged now that we're all working remote? But first, yeah, so the first day, uh, what did we implement straight away? Um, it was relatively an easy way for us to, to, to go on full remote mode. Um, yeah, we, we basically have laptops and iPhones, so that wasn't the biggest issue. Uh, but starting uh, Friday morning, um, the 13th, we had morning meetings every single day at, at 8.30, and we still have those every single day. Um, as of now, I'm not organizing these, these, these um, stand-ups. We're having different people host them, so it's a different vibe. Of course, we want people to, uh, to turn on their webcam uh, to make it interactive. Um, there are lunch 
hangout rooms available so you could have digital lunches. Uh, if you're with, working together with, with uh, or living together with your girlfriend or friends, it's not a problem. But if you're working alone, uh, it's definitely nice to see some people during lunch. Um, what we promoted is that you join as many meetings uh, of your colleagues as possible. It's great learning. Uh, and once again, it, it, um, it engages you a lot. We've put a lot of focus on internal trainings. Um, we'll discuss that in a bit. What we definitely noticed is we need to identify new uh, ideal customers at this moment. Um, I'll actually show you in a bit how we are using our own tool for that. Um, I think it's very important that you know the guidelines. So talk to your, to your finance what and what you can do. Um, and of course, keeping everybody active on Slack. I think Slack or, or Microsoft Teams is probably the most important channel now to keep everyone uh, engaged. One thing that might differ from us with other companies is that we didn't make any changes to our KPIs uh, and still haven't um, as of the, the 13th of March. So last week, I think it was uh, Steve from HubSpot talking and, and, and Thijs from Reps uh, is definitely to talk to if you want to discuss inbound marketing. Um, I think that's still very important, uh, uh, but I'm not an expert on marketing, so I'm not going to go into that any further. What is very important uh, as of now, of course, is that you protect your base. Um, uh, it's so much easier to keep a client than uh, attract a new one. Uh, so checking in with your, your customers and partners is the, 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 the thing you should be focusing uh, on right now. So once you've got that covered, you've got your marketing, uh, you, you're in touch with your clients, then of course, in these times, you still wanna attract new business. And that's, I think, the discussion we'll be having today. Um, so is outbound important right now? Uh, I mean, there's budget freezes, there's hiring stops. I'm sure people know people uh, in their networks who, who've actually lost their jobs. Uh, and in my sense, outbound is more important than ever. Um, you want to be ahead of your competition right now uh, because even if there are budget freezes right now, once we're back up and running, you want to be able to get, um, uh, to get those, those, those clients in and new business in. Um, but it's important to lead. Actually, three things are most important, I would say, and that's lead with empathy. Um, I mean, it's a crazy situation for everyone. Uh, uh, first things first, of course, everyone has to go to full remote. I think for software companies such as ourselves, that isn't the biggest challenge. Um, uh, but for a lot of companies it is, uh, I think everyone, uh, especially in finance, huge shocks, of course, regarding cash flow. Uh, and right now people are just prioritizing how they can get through this, this crisis. So leading with empathy is, 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 is key there. Um, being relevant. That's something, uh, basically our software of course helps us with. So reaching out to the right accounts at the right time. So really make sure instead of sending in a cold email or doing a cold call, why are you reaching out now? Is that because they just are actually hiring? Are they, did they just receive funding? Did they just enter a new market? Why is the reason your product or service can help right now? Um, and last but not least, yeah, add value in every stage of the sales cycle. Um, don't check in with old prospects, but add value. Did you have a, did you have a create a great ebook, share that, a blog post, uh, um, a webinar? Be sure to add value with every point sales touch basically you have whether it's the first outreach or when you're following up what we did at vine was because of course there's a lot of markets um which which is crisis which is yeah epidemic is facing a huge impact on you need to check which industries are actually valid for you to reach out to so what we've done we've actually analyzed each and every part of the sales cycle which deals are moving forward so where are we able to book meetings? Where, um, uh, which, which deals are moving forward? Which clients actually signed? And of course, we also had quite some uh, hotels as clients or, or, or companies in the event branch. Wouldn't it be crazy, of course, that, that, that those are not the companies we're focusing on right now. But it's important to, to really analyze which deals are moving forward so you actually can redefine your own ideal customer profile. Um, what we've noticed, and especially our clients as well, is that... Um, there are a lot of companies uh, who are investing now in, in e-commerce. I think uh, we've all done a lot of uh, shopping online now. Uh, maybe now this is time to, to uh, invest in your home. So maybe it's, it's your garden. Now the sun is shining a lot more. So e-commerce parties are, for instance, really interesting for our clients to reach out to. So when we look at Vinu, and this is going to be short, we're not going to demo Vinu today, but uh, we could, for instance, how our clients are using it. 
um, is looking at companies which are, for instance, selling stuff uh, on the internet. So uh, these are just the, the SBE codes. So companies that are actually selling, um, well, actually, let, let's take the home supplies. So these companies are registered as that, but now, for instance, it's interesting for logistics companies, for uh, online marketing, but also e-commerce consultancies to find those that actually have um, a web shop. So we can find companies that have an e-commerce platform, and then we can find those that have, uh, uh, for instance, Shopify or, uh, or Intershop or Magento, whatever. So now our clients can actually find companies um, that are offering these products uh, on, on platforms. And of course, it's important to look at your current clients to be able to make these, uh, these searches. So now we actually find companies in the Netherlands with a web shop who offer these uh, products or services. Well, this is how our clients use it. Uh, we ourselves, we use it, for instance, to find companies who consult e-commerce because e-commerce right now is, is really big. Um, so we could find companies that are in consulting, consulting, um, uh, which, which for instance, also have keywords on their website, such as e-commerce or webshop or, or Magento. So we know they're actually helping these, uh, these companies out. So it's important to, to analyze your, your, the clients are actually deals are moving forward, um, or, or actually becoming client now. One thing that we, what, what I mentioned before is that, uh, our KPIs haven't changed. Um, and especially when it comes to e-meetings, which we've been doing a lot, uh, they are definitely still happening. Uh, I see over a hundred people in, in this, in this webinar right now. Uh, there is, people do have time and they definitely have time, uh, for, for e-meetings. So the question is, how do we, how do we switch from, from face to face meetings to, to e-meetings or how do we even book meetings, um, uh, in these crazy uncertain times? Well, three things we have been using, uh, uh before. Um, but I want to show how we're doing that actually right now in these, um, uh, in these circumstances. So let's look at LinkedIn, Vidyard, or, or actually still using uh, uh, the phone. LinkedIn, I think once again, it's important to lead uh, with empathy. So um, uh, these are messages we, we, you could send out. Um, uh, I mean, definitely acknowledge that it's a crazy time. Um, and once again, add value. Don't pitch right now. Uh, uh, but add value, send a webinar, send the interesting blog you have, an ebook you created. I think the most important thing is adding value at this, uh, at this particular moment. I think uh, we, we've noticed, for instance, that LinkedIn messages have worked a lot better than cold emails um, the last four weeks. Vidyard, I think Steve from, um, uh, from HubSpot actually also mentioned it yesterday. Our SDRs, so uh, the people who make the first contact, um, they actually actively use Vidyard. It's a Chrome extension. You can use it right here as well. Um, and basically you can make a small personal video and this you can email or, or send again via LinkedIn to make it personal. You could, you could actually see your face. And once again, we're adding value to uh, uh, invite them to webinars of ours or other interesting content they have. So using video to stand out in the mass, definitely a reason, a good way to stand out right now. Last um, but not least, uh, the phone. So I don't know who of you have tried to, to do outreach or cold calling uh, uh, towards companies or landlines right now. Uh, probably not as successful as it used to be. Um, I wanna show you a tool where we've been using, it's called Lucia, which actually helps you find direct numbers of individual, individuals. So imagine I wanna reach out to Thijs from, from Webs because um, I think that's easy. Great potential client of ours. It's also a Chrome extension. So once again, Lucia. And once it, you track the LinkedIn profile and you find his direct business number. Uh, and this way, of course, you can still get in touch using the phone. So this is a great tool we've been using ourselves um, in the last couple of years already. But now again, uh, I wouldn't use it three weeks ago when we just went on full remote. For the last week, we've actually been using again, and, and people are definitely open for, for, for meetings. Okay, Matthijs, question from my side. Um, during uh, that COVID-19 uh, change that happens on, on, on that uh, Friday in March, um, 
I think there are different attitudes you can have. Eh? You can either survive, adapt, or grow as a business. Um, and you obviously, obviously have the adapt mindset in order to keep growing. Um, so I, you've shown some things that you changed and uh, a little bit. So your ideal customer profile changed a little bit. So the focus on other uh, businesses to, to, to reach out to. So in order to still have the meetings booked for your sales team. Um, but if you took, take a look back at the last couple of uh, two to three weeks, are there any um, uh, things that went wrong? Like, can you share your biggest mis mistake with us? Um, yeah, so I think that was actually in, during the beginning. So, um, so we're very inbound uh, and outbound focused. Uh, so very active on, on, on the inbound side, trying to uh, attract people to our website itself. But next to that, I think we've, uh, if you look at our new business, 80% still comes from outbound. So that's reaching out to, to people uh, ourselves using uh, LinkedIn, email, or phone. But the phone is actually the most, uh, the, the, the most active platform we've been using in the last four years. So I think the biggest mistake we've made um, is keeping business as usual for our SDRs. Uh, so so the, once again, the people who do, do the first cold call. Um, we actually made calls the Monday uh, uh, right after, uh, right after the first, the, basically the first Monday we've been working from home, and yeah, those were very uh, uh, unsuccessful calls, I would say, even though we were being relevant, etc. Um, we now change that to actually always having a first touch, whether uh, via mail, like with a video, or via LinkedIn. So there's actually already we already added value before doing the first call itself. Um, but that's definitely, of course, um, yeah, you can call that a fuck up, I would say. Okay, thank you. Then again, so now we've definitely noticed that people are open open uh, to talk again, also when it's via the phone, et cetera. So especially last week, we've been able to conduct or book uh, new meetings using tools such as Lush, uh, Lucia. Once again, um, people do actually have more time. Uh, so when you do... Are you, when you're able to land a meeting, we were always focusing on, on, on 45 minute meetings because we also respect our, our prospects time. But now we've noticed that easily we can actually take a little bit longer. So if you, if you, if you were doing 30 minute, 30 minute meetings before, try to go for 45. If you were doing 45, go for 60. If you were used to doing 60, maybe even do one and a half so you, so you can actually make the most out of the meetings you currently have. Um, Myself, I don't have uh, uh, um, a kids or a dog. Uh, a lot of my colleagues do. So one of the tools we found is crisp.ai. I'm not gonna show you, but definitely make a note of that. Uh, and you can block all background noises. I could literally drop my keys right now and, and you wouldn't hear it. It works like a charm. This is probably obvious for, for most people uh, already doing a lot of remote work, um, but always use your camera. Uh, it, it's so important to keep uh, the conversation engaged. Then, um, yeah, one thing, of course, we also have noticed, uh, and I think most people in, in this, uh, this webinar right now will also notice that, that the number of actual decisions have decreased. So I'm sure people had great uh, prospects in their pipeline, um, but the amount of decisions have decreased, right? Let's, let's pick this up after Corona. Let's, uh, let, let's pick it up after the summer. So I think it's really important that you have a solid plan for when you do have good meetings, how we can actually get a decision in. And, um, we found some pretty interesting articles on that, which I want to share, which I want to share with you today. We have, so, a, we have a question if you uh, don't mind. Um, yeah, sure. this is, a, this is a, a good insight. Um, the question is like this, um, this is, uh, you are uh, arranging meetings for your sales team in order to sell a software license online. So your customer uh, uh, will do the actual uh, sale online. Um, in our case, uh, uh, we sell a website project or something else where we have physical meetings involved. And even in the, in the question here, it's asked like, okay, what kind of advices do you have? Uh, if you need to have a physical meeting or a product to show in, further in your sales process. What, 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 what did you think of that? I know you don't sell like that, but, yeah. but can you share your ideas on that? I have some yeah. ideas as well to, to yeah. help you. 
Um, so we actually have two, two solutions uh, at the moment. So we have a very straight SaaS solution, which is basically uh, access to our data platform where you could, uh, of course, enrich your current CRM data. We can easily do that um, uh, online via these, these, uh, these, these meetings. What we're now also doing is, is focusing more on solution sales. So we have much bigger uh, projects uh, uh, where we actually enrich multiple data streams for, for, for larger organizations. And we always have these meetings face-to-face -face because there's workshops involved. We were using whiteboards. We need to, we need to draw out stuff. Um, and we've even actually conducted these ones uh, using uh, iPads. So we send out iPads where the, 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 um, the, the prospects could participate online and actually draw out what they're, what they're also meaning. Um, actually, when you show physical projects, pro projects itself, um, I'm interested to hear your thoughts as well, Thais, how you could do that. Yeah, what I experience with our customers, uh, what we have now is uh, like our consultants, they always have physical meetings together with the project team from, uh, from a client um, where we share designs, where we share, uh, where we get input in order to make those designs, like all those kind of things. Um, and I still notice that all these meetings are going, uh, uh, are continuing, they're not postponed, and they use uh, tools in order to, um, uh, for example, a digital whiteboard, which you can connect to Zoom, so people can still use uh, uh, notes and things if you have a brainstorm via Zoom. Um, we can still demo uh, uh, things, and in order, if you have like, a physical product, I would say start sending out samples, uh, do things with video. Uh, you can uh, record a demo of your product and share it um, uh, because yeah, we still have to, 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 to challenge the, the physical meetings in that case. Um, uh, yeah, so, so that will be my, my answer. Like try to uh, uh, transform as much as possible to online. Um, uh, so with video, uh, with online meetings and those kind of things. Um, please continue. Uh, there are some questions coming in. I, I will um, uh, manage that for you and I will interrupt you in a second. Cool. Yeah, I think what you definitely said, Thais, video is key. And if you're looking for uh, like a digital whiteboard, uh, I know Miro, M-I-R-O, they have a free, um, a free tool you can use right now as well. So, um, so once you once you landed the meeting, and uh, of course we're, we're, most of us are in sales, so we actually want to uh, get deals in as well and move forward. Um, what we never really had was a clear ROI calculator, so a return on investment on our on our service. Um, we were, of course were able to show value, and, and it was always in. in, in we could could do that do that on an easy way. But what we never use in our current sales process. Of, with the sales process before was a ROI calculator. And I, um, I don't know if you know Gong, but uh, um, I would definitely follow them uh, on, 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 in, on, on LinkedIn because their content is, uh, is, is amazing, especially in these times. But they also said it's so important um, to be able to, to, to prove the, the, the clear ROI of your product or service. Um, uh, especially like right now, it should either increase remote productivity or it should clearly save costs or it should clearly uh, create, generate new revenue. Um, and yeah, we did this really ad hoc actually at Vinu. Um, if you look for instance at HubSpot, uh, which already have these ROI calculators on, um, on, on, on their website itself, um, I would Google ROI calculator, how you could actually easily do this. We actually did this really ad hoc created a, a, an, an Excel sheet. So basically where, where people can fill in exactly um, how much time they would save um, or what Vine would actually bring to them. Because right now you're not selling, uh, if you're like, we're, we're, we're selling to, to sales directors or, 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 or marketing directors. Right now, everyone is selling to, to CFOs, to financial directors. Uh, and in order to make it easy for a financial director, clearly show how your product or service will save money or um, generate more revenue. Are there any questions on that, Thais? No, you can continue, thank you. I'll actually share definitely this, uh, this, this article with, with you after the webinar, but I can also show, um, share where you could 
find a quick ROI calculator. I would definitely make sure you have that. And also challenge your customers when you're having conversations. Um, even if they say, I can make a decision about, uh, um, about this, tell them, let's actually create a, a business case together so you can, you can challenge the, the CFO together. Uh, you need your MVP in that, of course, uh, but always create a business case. I think definitely um, right now it's, it's, it's difficult for sales uh, because there are uncertain times, right? But I think that the most important thing to do is actually ask uh, for business. Um, that is actually your job as well. Uh, um, but also sit down with your, with your manager or, or if you can with your finance director um, and sit down and discuss what are actually our guidelines regarding negotiations. Um, can we... Um, uh, can we have the contract start uh, after the summer, but they already get access to our tool right now? Uh, what can we do regarding payment terms? Be sure you know uh, how flexible you are, but also communicate this to your, to your prospects and clients that, of course, we, we do respect the, the situation right now, and we're, we're willing to help and, and be as flexible as we can. But it's important for you as a sales uh, uh, manager to also know how flexible you are in that sense. Um, we've, of course, been looking at, at, at deals that did come in and uh, uh, when, when you, there's a lot of bigger clients, enterprises with uh, budget freezes uh, and overall SMB companies are easy to make quick decisions. Uh, so I'm not saying you should focus on, on smaller companies, but I'm saying definitely have a clear balance in between both so you don't get stuck uh, in, in the middle. Yeah, and that, that's something which uh, it's great to see that the chat pane is responding to each other as well. That was one of the uh, 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 challenges somebody mentioned in the chat pane. Like, what if you are focusing on like big enterprises uh, where they have budget freezes, they are hardly to, to, to reach out to these days. Um, and to add to this, um, uh, it's also been answered in the chat pane, but people say like, okay, but if your sales cycle is a little bit longer with those bigger enterprise, your DMU is more complex. So think of strategies like account-based marketing, for example, but still keep uh, being relevant and keep being in contact and in the most human way as possible. That will make sure that uh, uh, you will um, keep filling your pipeline uh, even these days uh, with uh, complex DMUs and, and bigger organizations. Yeah, I agree. And even if you do have longer sales cycles and, and you're, you're facing budget freezes right now, then it, this is actually the moment to make everything as complete as possible. So when there are possibilities to, um, to get things going, everything is ready to sign. Um, so especially in these longer sales cycles, make sure everything is ready. Uh, so when we're out of this situation, uh, everything is ready to sign. But I've also asked my, uh, uh, my reps who are focusing on larger accounts to also fill their pipeline. With little, uh, with with a bit smaller companies, uh, because they are generally just easier. They're more flexible and they're easy to make quick decisions. And and I think cash is king uh, in every single crisis there is. Um, so this is, I think, definitely a challenge for for sales managers, um, keeping uh, everybody engaged, uh, but also as a sales rep, keeping yourself motivated. Um, I sure, uh, sure as hell miss the, 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 the office vibes. Uh, and we miss the high fives, uh, celebrating successes. Uh, and that, of course, makes it a lot more difficult when you're, uh, when you're online seven days a week. Um, so what I already explained in the beginning uh, is, is we're having uh, daily stand-ups um, at 8.30 uh, where we actually highlight yesterday's um, uh, highlights or we explain them and clear goals for that day itself. Um, we change this every single time, so I'm not the only one uh, uh, talking. Every single day, someone else is hosting these stand-ups to keep it energizing, um, and we're also adding little things uh, to make it a little uh, less standard. Um, at the end of the day, uh, after that, everyone slacks, but this can be email, of course, as well, their exact goals for today, uh, and at five, we also um, slack again, saying what we did accomplish or, or what we didn't. But it's also important to mention some, some, some positivity, especially in the morning, so you could, have a, so you could jump start your day. So we're having these stand-ups every single uh, morning. I could definitely uh, advise you to basically uh, join meetings of each other every single day. Uh, first of all, you'll always learn something. 
I still join demos uh, of people in the Nordics as well, um, but especially it's also very engaging. So when you're, uh, especially once again, if you're living by yourself, um, it's just a great way to, to uh, interact with your, with your colleagues on a daily basis. What we did immediately as well is increase the amount of our internal trainings. Once again, uh, to keep everybody engaged, this can be of course on your own product. So yes, yesterday we had one on, on, our, uh, on our API functionality, uh, but also tools you're using. So um, you can actually reach out to your um, account manager of tools or, or, or services you're using for them to give you an extra training. We're using uh, an e-signature tool and yesterday we learned that it's much more than an e-signature tool, but we can use it straight away um, so invest in internal trainings, try to have them actually twice a week. Yeah. Don't skip the Freimibo, uh, the Friday drinks. Uh, we had a great session last uh, Friday where three colleagues organized a Kahoot, some sort of pub quiz. Uh, and I think it's just very important to both celebrate success, but also keep everyone um, engaged. And looking at those points, Matthijs, uh, especially the daily standups via a online conference tool, is something that I experience as super valuable, but also it's mentioned by a lot of uh, um, uh, people already also in the past episodes of Web's Webinar Wednesday. So I would like to ask everybody in the chat pane uh, by answering a one if you do already do this or a two if you don't do the daily standups via a video conference. So please, in the chat pane, a one, a two, if you don't, uh, to get a little insights on that. All right, so it's one, two, two, one. So mostly ones, uh, that, that's good, because um, yeah, what Matthijs is saying, I really, really, really see the value of that, that you can jumpstart your day together with your colleagues, get a little bit of inspiration from each other, feel each other's energy, so um, yeah, I would definitely, if you answer the two, I would definitely recommend implement this starting tomorrow with your direct colleagues, a daily stand up um, every morning via a video conference too. Yeah, I, I, I agree 100% guys, definitely. Um, it's important to share success. Uh, I'm part of a revenue collective, which is a, a network group of, uh, uh, VP sales and, and, and CMOs of, of SaaS companies, both in, in the Netherlands, but also in, in the US. And we also have a Slack channel there and we already had this, uh, but it was a Slack channel called Good Vibes. And you could do this on Slack, you could use this on, on Microsoft Teams. But I think right now it's so important uh, to share some positivity and especially uh, um, personal victories as well. Um, and I must say, uh, since uh, this, is, this one is generated the 18th of March, this has probably been the most active, um, uh, active channel. And I think that's also the reason why I have the feeling we're more engaged now than, than ever before uh, between departments as well. Um, but these little things definitely um, yeah, make the difference, I would say. And they're so easy and quick to implement. That's actually a good question. Um, is everybody actually using a tool such as Slack or, or, or Teams? Because otherwise, um, should we do again? One is, one is yes, two is no. Yeah, that's always good. One and two. One, if you use something other than your phone or email to be in contact with direct colleagues. A two, if you don't yet. Okay. So definitely quite some, some ones. Yeah. Also quite some twos. Um, yeah, I, I would, uh, we, we've been using this, uh, uh, for, since the day I started at Vinyl three and a half years ago, but, um, I would definitely uh, invest in tooling like this because the communication is so much easier and your mailbox will get filled <laughs> with emails on a daily basis. And, and why is this different for you than, for example, a chat group in WhatsApp or something like that? Um, well, I think I, I would actually like to have my WhatsApp uh, and my, my, my personal phone a little bit on the, on the private level. With the, the nice thing about chat, about Slack, for instance, is that you have different channels. So you can have a sales channel, you can have a marketing channel, you can have a marketing content channel, you can have a general channel with everybody in there. So per department, you can have these channels and you can also share and save um, uh, messages. So there's no need to look back into email six months ago. You can just easily see what's been mentioned uh, and it's available to everybody. So I actually see quite some twos, um, which, um, yeah, I would definitely, in, in times of remote work, 
get a free demo of, of Slack uh, or, or Microsoft Teams if you're using that, of course. Do you have something else to mention besides that, Thijs? No, 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 no. I would say uh, definitely start using one of those tools. Yeah. And um, especially when you, you, you don't yet, of course. Yeah. And then also when we jump back, I would definitely, uh, uh, I mean, Google Hangouts has free. You can use it for free. And it's so easy to set up a quick uh, uh, 20, min 20 minutes is all you need. But then you jumpstart your day uh, as efficient and effectively as possible with the whole, whole team. So just have it on a regular basis. And I would, I would take turns in hosting these meetings. I think um, if you really, I think you, if you ask me what keeps me up at night, <laughs> uh, that's actually a global recession. Uh, if you look at what happened in, in the US now, two weeks ago, I think 10 million people lost their jobs. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, that, that's of course that get, keeps me up a little bit at night. Yeah, I understand. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, thank you for that. It was a very valuable episode again. Um, I give everybody a couple more seconds to ask questions or share insights. I have one request uh, written down from Emil, I, I, and you can do it at the end, uh, Matthijs. Um, but the thing is, uh, if you have any more questions, please share. Um, for my end, I have one more uh, um, remark. Uh, of course, next week we have another episode uh, and then we will zoom in on how to save your trade show season because a lot of trade shows are uh, every actual, every trade show is canceled the upcoming months. Um, and it's still a very important uh, a lead generator for uh, B2B businesses. So we zoom in with one of our customer experience consultants from Webs. Um, uh, he has great cases on how to transform your online um, channel as a fully functioning uh, exhibition booth so you can save your trade shows uh, season in order to still generate some leads. So that's what we will doing next week. Um, before I give you the final gong, Matthijs, I really want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, Joop, I want to thank you for all your work behind the scenes. And I want to thank every attendee uh, uh, during this webinar. I hope to see you soon next week and take care, everybody. Matthijs, finish it with a gong. Thanks for having me, Thijs. All right.